The moment my girlfriend, Lisa, suggested the idea, I thought she was joking. You want me to what? I had asked, incredulous. But she was dead serious. She had been training for this tennis tournament for months, and now, on the eve of the big event, she had come down with a terrible flu. There was no way she could compete, but she didn't want to forfeit her hard work. Her solution, a magic spell that would transform me, her boyfriend Andy, into a copy of her. Just for the tournament, she promised. It's only a few matches. You'll be fine. Reluctantly, I agreed. How hard could it be to win a few tennis matches against a bunch of girls? I played sports, after all. Little did I know how wrong I was. The transformation itself was bizarre. One moment I was looking at Lisa, and the next, I was looking at myself. Well, at Lisa's reflection, but it was me. I felt a strange mix of disorientation and fascination. My body had changed completely. I was now a perfect copy of Lisa, right down to the long hair, the soft curves, and, the chest. That was the first challenge. I had never realized how much movement those parts of the body experienced during physical activity. Every time I ran or jumped, it felt like I was battling my own anatomy. Then there was the outfit. The skirt was short and fluttery, and the ruffled panties were more distracting than I'd anticipated. I kept trying to adjust them, which only made things worse. Stepping onto the court for my first match, I felt a wave of nervousness wash over me. The other players eyed me curiously, but I tried to maintain my composure. The first few points were a disaster. My usual strategies didn't translate well with this new body, and every time I tried a powerful backhand, my chest got in the way. By the end of the first set, I was down and struggling to keep my focus. Sweat poured down my face, and the ruffled panties were driving me insane, tickling my thighs and distracting me from the game. Lisa's voice echoed in my mind, reminding me of her warning. If I didn't win, she'd leave me like this forever. The thought sent a chill down my spine. Desperate, I tried to find a rhythm. I focused on playing smarter, using more finesse and less brute force. Gradually, I started winning points. The second set was close, but I managed to pull ahead, taking it by a narrow margin. The final set was a grueling battle of wills. Every time I wanted to give up, I thought about being stuck in this body forever, and it gave me the strength to push through. With one final, triumphant swing, I won the match. The relief was overwhelming. I fell to my knees, gasping for breath, as the crowd cheered. I had done it. I had won. Back in the locker room, Lisa was waiting for me with a big smile. I knew you could do it, she said, hugging me tightly. Despite my victory on the court, the magic didn't wear off as promised. Lisa and I tried everything we could think of, but nothing seemed to work. Days turned into weeks, and it became increasingly clear that I might be stuck in Lisa's body for much longer than either of us had anticipated. At first, the prospect was daunting. I struggled to adapt to the daily routines and challenges of living as a girl. Simple tasks like choosing an outfit or applying makeup felt like insurmountable hurdles. Lisa was incredibly patient, guiding me through each step and teaching me the nuances of my new existence. As time went on, I began to find a strange sense of normalcy in my new life. I discovered that I enjoyed shopping for clothes, finding the perfect balance between comfort and style. I even started to appreciate the ritual of doing my hair and makeup each morning. It was like preparing for a performance, and it gave me a sense of control and confidence. One day, as Lisa and I were walking through the park, she turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Andy, she began, hesitating. How are you really feeling about all of this? I mean, being me, being a girl. I paused, considering her question carefully. At first, I hated it. I admitted. It was confusing and overwhelming. But now, I don't know. I think I'm starting to like it. It's different, but not in a bad way. Lisa smiled, a mix of relief and happiness in her eyes. I'm glad to hear that. I was worried you'd be miserable. As the weeks passed, I started to explore new interests. I joined a local book club, something I'd never considered before, and found that I loved discussing novels and sharing perspectives with others. I also took up yoga, 
enjoying the sense of peace and balance it brought to my life. My friendships deepened, and I made new connections that felt genuine and fulfilling. Then there was the matter of sports. While I missed playing hockey, I found that I had a real talent for tennis. With Lisa's encouragement, I continued to train and compete, winning several local tournaments. The thrill of victory felt just as sweet in a tennis skirt as it had in hockey gear. One evening, after another successful match, Lisa and I sat down for dinner. You know, she said, taking a sip of her drink, I've been thinking. Maybe we don't need to rush to change you back. You seem happy, and we've both grown a lot from this experience. I looked at her, feeling a surge of affection. You're right, I'm not in a hurry anymore. I feel like I've discovered a whole new side of myself, and I want to see where it leads. Over the next few months, I fully embraced my new identity. I legally changed my name to Andrea, and with Lisa's help, I navigated the complexities of my new life. We even found a way to share our love for each other in this new context, deepening our relationship in ways I never thought possible. One day, as I stood on the court, preparing for another match, I took a moment to reflect on how far I'd come. The girl looking back at me in the mirror was confident, strong, and ready to take on the world. I had become someone new, not just in appearance but in spirit. Life has a funny way of throwing curveballs, but sometimes, those unexpected changes can lead to the most profound growth. Being Andrea wasn't what I had planned, but it turned out to be exactly what I needed. And as I stepped onto the court, the cheers of the crowd ringing in my ears, I knew that I was exactly where I was meant to be, living life to the fullest, one serve at a time.